Okay, so this is a 13.6. So the, uh, what we want to consider here is we have a function fxy, and we have a linear path coming into x0, y0, which I've drawn here. Uh, we want to find the derivative along this path. So uh, let's first parameterize this path. So it's a line. So recall to parameterize a line. Uh, we uh, use so be R of T equal our first point x0, y0 plus the difference of the second point and the first point times t. So I would parameterize this line here coming into x0, y0. Okay, so simplifying this, I'll have r of t equals going to be x0, and then in the x component here will be x1 minus x0 times t. So x1 minus x0 times t, comma. And in the y component, we'll have a y0 uh, plus difference in y values, y1 minus y0 t. OK, so that would be our path. So at time 0 would be at x0, y0, and the time 1 would be here. So as t goes from 0 to 1, sorry, from 1 to 0, it come in this way. Uh, let's assume, so assume that the magnitude of u is 1. That's fine, assumption. Uh, note that the, co uh, actually, yeah, let me draw a little triangle here. So from here to here, that would be the difference in the y value would be y1 minus y0. And down here, that guy will be x1 minus x0. So notice the cosine of theta, which is adjacent over hypotenuse. In our case, the adjacent side is this guy here, which we just said was x1 minus x0. x1 minus x0 uh, divided by hypotenuse. We're assuming the, we're going to assume the length of the hypotenuse is 1, to be 1 here. And in a similar fashion, the sine of theta should be opposite over hypotenuse. The opposite here is y1 minus y0. Again, hypotenuse is 1. So I can then substitute these guys. So, uh, so therefore, the cosine can go in place of the x1 minus x0 here. And the sine can go in place of the y1 minus y0. So substituting into r of t, we get, so r of t then equals x0 plus cosine theta times t, y0 plus sine theta times t. That's how we can parameterize a line. Uh, so hence we're going to take derivative along this path. So hence, derivative along r of t as t goes to 0, so we'll be coming into, coming into x0, y0 on our path, is uh, given by, so let me just be here. So 
So it's given by so derivative would be referred to as derivative with respect to t would be f of r of t. That means you're taking derivative of f along our curve or along our, our line r t. So this would be then limit t goes to zero of f of r t minus f of r zero over t. But now r of t, so r of t, uh, we just figured it out, so it's this, this guy here, back here for a second. So here's our r of t right here. So this then would equal a limit t goes to zero. Now f of r of t would mean put this in place of x, put this in place of y, so it's going to be f of x zero plus cosine theta t y zero plus sine theta t minus, and r of zero is just going to be our x zero y zero. You can check when you put zero in place of t, you just get x zero y zero over t. So this would be our derivative coming along our path. Okay, uh, we define so we're going to use a, make a definition here. We define the derivative along our path so definition uh, d subscript u of f x y where u is equal to cosine i plus sine j. Okay, we call the d subscript u f x y. Uh, I probably should use actually put as x zeros in these. Y zero the directional derivative. Directional derivative of our f function. Okay. So we're going to make another definition now. Uh, let's bring it back over here. Okay, so erase this. Okay, next thing uh, we define so an upside down triangle, uh, it's called a delta. Uh, f of x zero y zero. We're going to define that to mean the partial derivative of x evaluated at x zero y zero i direction plus partial derivative of y x zero y zero j direction. We call uh, this guy here the gradient. Okay, so we're going to prove a theorem now. So theorem 11. So the theorem 11 states the following. So, theorem 11. 
the directional derivative of f, it can be written as the gradient of f dotted with u, we're getting at where u, or to define it, it's going to be cosine theta i plus sine theta j. So it's a way to write our uh, direction derivative and uh, send that's equal to the gradient dotted with r u. So u is pretty much the direction we're coming into our point x0, y0. So let's look at the proof of this. So proof, and uh, note, just by the way we define it, the directional derivative is defined as we uh, defined as the proof to respect t of f of rt, where the rt guy is equal to uh, you go back in notes there, or back uh, in the, the video we had it as x0 plus cosine theta t comma y0 plus sine theta t. Okay, so I'm going to call this x and call this guy y. Now I'm going to use theorem 10, so by theorem 10, which is a chain rule, by theorem 10, i.e. chain rule, chain rule, uh, we have, we have the directional derivative Again, is equal to derivative respect to t of f of r t. So using chain rule on this is going to be partial to respect to x times dx dt plus partial to respect to y dy dt. Okay. So let's keep going here. Okay, so uh, next thing. So since I have the picture now, let me just write up here again. So I know our x was defined to be x0 plus cosine times t and or y was uh, y0 plus sine theta t. t. Okay, so we need to take derivative of x with respect to t. Uh, this implies dx dt. So the derivative of x with respect to t, well, there's only a t here, so the derivative of t is 1, so it's just going to be, and that's gone, it's a constant, it's going to be cosine theta. And dy dt. So again, here's my y. Uh, take a derivative with respect to t, that's a constant, so it's gone. Uh, t, derivative of t is 1, so it's just going to be sine theta. Okay, so substituting into our uh, chain rule, so sub into chain rule, we get, we'll get our direction derivative then. 
So let me just write the channel again. That's dx dt plus fy dy dt. So making those substitutions, we'll have our gradient. Here I did write it, but uh, when I say partial derivative respect to x, I mean at x0, y0, I can write an x again. I'm going to save on uh, writing out too much stuff. Now my dx dt is cosine and plus fy. So again, I'm going to put the x0, y0 this time, times dy dt dy dt sine. So we get that. Uh, but notice then we could write this as partial derivative to respect to x of x0, y0, i plus fy, x0, y0, j dotted with cosine i plus sine j. If you dotted those, you'd multiply the i components, and it would give you that one. And then you multiply the j components, and it give you that one. So therefore, uh, this then equals partial drift to respect to x at x0, y0, i plus partial drift to respect to y, x0, y0, j. Now, this, this stuff here is what I was calling u at the beginning. Go back to the beginning here. The theorem. We had uh, our u is equal to cosine i sine j. So I made that substitution here. So uh, there it will be times, sorry, done it with u. But also, by definition, this is the gradient. This is our gradient here, so our gradient. So we have then that this is gradient x0, y0, dot with u. And that's what we're trying to prove, so we're done. So we'll finish there. I complete the proof of theorem 11. Okay.